There's this big question right now. I think where people land on how they answer this question is going to determine the trajectory of their life. And that is, do you think humans are inherently sinful or do you think they're inherently good? What are, when, I guess when you look out into culture, what are some of the, the lies or um, gosh, either pitfall stumbling blocks in messaging that you would say is enhancing this message of, you know, you can find your own truth. You can mm. um, be the best you and then put that out there to create a better society. Yeah. Well, I think you've nailed, nailed it on the head. It's like, there's this big question right now. And every, I think where people land on how they answer this question is going to determine the trajectory of their life. And that is, do you think uh, humans are inherently sinful or do you think they're inherently good? Mm -hmm. And ultimately that is going to determine where you're going to go politically, where you're going to go theologically, where you're going to go sociologically, psychologically, how you're going to parent, how you're going to, you know, be in relationship with your spouse. That is the fundamental question. And right now in our culture, the number one message, I mean, I see this everywhere I turn, especially with all of the media that's aimed at my kids. My kids are about, let's see, we've got 14 and 11. So right there in the middle of that Gen Z generation and everything that's aimed at them is telling them, hey, you, what you have inside of yourself is perfect. It's good. You just need to kind of dig down in there and unleash that gold onto the world. But the problem is, is that, you know, if you answer the question in the other way, if you know that you're inherently sinful, then you don't actually want to unleash all of that onto the world. There's something that has to happen uh, in the interim, right? That that's, that's a problem that needs to be fixed. But one of the lies we talk about in the book is this lie, you are enough. And I always tell people, you know, I make a little disclaimer, like if you have this stitched on a pillow in your house or you have an I am enough tattoo, you know, hang with me. Don't don't get mad and walk away, because here's the thing. These slogans that we're dealing with in the book, things like, you know, you are enough. You're perfect just as you are. You should put yourself first. Uh, you're in control of your own destiny. You only live once. God just wants you to be happy. All of these are kind of like slogans that could appear to be kind of neutral. So if you're just taking them at face value, if you filter them through a biblical worldview, you can kind of make them make sense, right? But if you filter them through how the world intends them to be understood, really, these are not just ideas that fail on a common sense level, like on a logical level. But if you dig down to the bottom, they actually cause a great deal of spiritual rot and real real devastation, really. I mean, just think about the idea of you are enough. First of all, just on the common sense level, uh, I remember I tell the story in the book of when I gained 80 pounds with my first pregnancy, and I had never experienced, you know, the, just the weight, the physical weight on my bones of after giving birth to Dylan and she didn't weigh 80 pounds. So I came home with all that weight, you know, like, I don't know what I was thinking, like, <laughs> She didn't weigh 80 pounds, but I came home with all this weight. And not only did I have those kind of physical things to deal with, but also, um, and I've talked to her about this and, and she knows that, you know, I, I can kind of joke about this now, but she was a very unhappy baby. Like if she was conscious, she was crying. So our first, you know, five, six months was really, really difficult. And I remember one time thinking, Hey, you know, maybe I can just take her to the mall and walk her around and maybe that'll make her happy. But at four months old, I put her in the stroller and it turns out she did not enjoy that. She did not enjoy being <laughs> strapped into strollers or car seats or anything like that. And I remember just sitting down on this bench in the mall and just kind of having this meltdown moment where I was like, I mean, is this ever going to feel better? Am I ever going to feel like I'm a good mom? I felt like I was failing at every turn. And so years later, I saw a, a magazine article that said to every exhausted mom out there, you are enough. And I, I thought back to that moment when I had sat down on that bench, just totally exasperated at my wits end. And if somebody would have come up to me and said, hey, you are enough. I, I think I would have wanted to punch him in the face, right? Because I knew deep down in that moment that I wasn't enough. I couldn't figure out how to make my baby happy. I couldn't figure out how to be healthy physically. I couldn't figure out how to do things in the right way. And so to tell me in that moment, you are enough, 
that would have put a great burden on me. And our friend Ali Beth Stuckey in her book, uh, You're Not Enough and That's Okay, she made a really insightful observation where she said, the self can't both be the problem and the solution. Mm -hmm. And so I think when we tell people you are enough, it's based on the assumption that they're inherently good, but really it's not just that. We're putting a burden on them to where we're saying, not only are do you know, do you have to search down inside yourself and find all the good there, but you have to solve all your own problems. Like you're enough. There's nothing outside of you that you need to complete you or to fix you or to help you. Like it's already all inside you. And I, I note in the book that that's a real burden to put on people. So that's just the common sense level. But of course, spiritually, we know it goes so much deeper because we know as Christians that we are inherently fallen. We need a savior. We need somebody outside of ourselves. And the great news is that our savior, Jesus, lived a perfectly sinless life. So he is enough. He, he's, he actually is enough. And he's better than we'll ever be. And so that's such great news because the Bible talks about Jesus' righteousness getting imputed onto us so that when God looks at us, he doesn't see our not enoughness. He sees the enoughness of Jesus. And Jesus is way better than we'll ever be. So that's really great news. But it's only great news if you know that you're a sinner. <laughs> 